Hello and welcome to our latest unboxing video. I'm Eliza here at the Hatfield Public Library with a box of uh, mostly fiction and I think a little bit of nonfiction. Um, we have The Ferryman by Justin Cronin who wrote The Passage, which was super popular. Um, it's a standalone novel about a group of survivors on a hidden island utopia where the truth isn't what it seems. I'm intrigued. This is a good, like, going on vacation, have extra time to read book. Uh, we have a new one by John Sanford. Here he is on the back. Dark Angel. This is a Letty Davenport novel. Ooh, we have the, the Glucose Goddess Method. I don't know what that means, but she looks she looks happy. Um, her name is Jessie Inchaspe. Um, says she wrote something called The Glucose Revolution. It's a four-week guide to cutting cravings, getting your, ed your energy back, and feeling amazing. Oh, that's funny. There's a picture of a purse with a flask in it. That's definitely, oh, it's for vinegar. It's so you can drink vinegar on the go. <laughs> I mean, I guess if that works, like if it helps, then that's good. That's good to drink vinegar. <laughs> doesn't sound appealing, but um, I think that sounding healthy, feeling healthy sounds appealing. So whatever works for you. I just definitely didn't expect to open the book and see a purse with a flask. And then it says it's for vinegar. Okay. I'm moving on. Um, mad. Oh, a madman's will. John Randolph, 400 slaves and the mirage of freedom by Gregory May. This sounds like an insane story. Um, just really like heartbreaking and difficult. It's a legal case where a man, um, was enslaved 400, um, African Americans. And then in his will, he said that he wanted them to be freed, but his children, um, it contested the will, so things were going back and forth. Uh, I, I can't imagine, but really good reviews. It sounds like an amazing story. We have Dirty Laundry by Disha Bowes. This is kind of a fun cover. It's got all the soap suds, and then you can see sort of the, the remains of a house. It's a Good Morning America book club. Oh, gosh, she was the perfect wife with the perfect life you would kill to have it. Um, it let's see, it takes place in a small Irish village. She's a, but she's a successful influencer making money on Instagram. Um, and then there's a friend who comes in, um, who wants what she has. And then there's a third woman as well. And then one of them is found murdered. <laughs> It Goes So Fast, The Year of No Do-Overs by Mary Louise Kelly. Something like triggered in my memory. I feel like I've read a Mary Louise Kelly. That The blurb is by Ann Patchett. That's a good, that's a good person to blurb you. Uh, anonymous sources and the bullet. Maybe, maybe I'm confused, but it says she's reported on national security for NPR for two decades. Um, uh, so, um, uh, oh, it's, oh, oh, this is okay. Sorry. It took me a minute to figure out what's happening here. Um, so this is about a woman who has always, uh, been very busy with work because she's, <laughs> she's, works very, very important job at NPR. And then, uh, she's also trying to spend time with her kids. And then she realizes sort of right before they go off to college, like this is her chance. She needs to spend time with them right now. Mm -hmm. Another nonfiction, we have Choosing to Run by Des Linden, Day Linden, Des Linden, um, a Boston Marathon champion. So a little bit of local interest there. And this is a, a memoir. We have Mary Higgins Clark writing with Alifair Burke, Where Are the Children Now? Um, so Mary Higgins Clark has actually um, passed away. <laughs> But then Alifer Burke is a popular um, sort of current mystery suspense writer. So it, um, so I guess they wrote together. Uh, I don't understand. So since they co-authored it, maybe I'm wrong about her having passed away. 
No, I don't think so. It says her legacy continues. Somehow they wrote the book, either either they wrote it right before she died or sort of Alifer Burke took over. Somehow we're getting the book, another Mary Higgins Clark. That's the important thing. We have a book called The Teachers, A Year Inside America's Most Vulnerable Important Profession by Alex Erden. Alexander Robbins. Um, yeah, I think that this is something, you know, there's a lot of things going on right now in the news, but I think that um, it seems from uh, my husband is a teacher, the teachers I talked to, that there's definitely a crisis going on. Um, so this is about uh, by a woman who goes behind the scenes and interviews true, sometimes shocking stories of three teachers as they navigate a year in the classroom. Um, so one is in the South, a ma middle school math teacher, a special education teacher, and an East Coast elementary school teacher. Uh, also serious, but in a different way, we have the new uh, Abraham Verghese's The Covenant of Water. I think he just took out uh, Justin Cronin for the thickest uh, novel in this box. And um, he wrote Cutting for Stone, which we did for book club. It was incredibly popular, sort of sprawling, epic novel. This seems like another one. It's gotten very good reviews. Um spans the years 1900 to 1977 and takes place on India's Malabar coast and follows three generations of a family. Sorry, I know this is going long, but this is a pretty big box. I have I have maybe like six, six more, a few more. <laughs> the Only Survivors by Megan Miranda, a popular sort of suspenseful thrillers. Um, uh, wow, two vans filled with, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So it says, two de a decade ago, two vans filled with high school seniors on a school service trip crashed into a Tennessee ravine and it claimed the lives of many of them. And nine students managed to escape. Um, they, But there seems like maybe there's maybe some suspicion about what really happened. Wow, this book is kind of heavy. It's like it's like the same size as this one, but but much heavier. It's called You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose, who wrote um The Perfect Marriage and then they crossed out perfect. <laughs> I mean, even if you don't like exist in a suspenseful domestic thriller, like there's there's no such thing as the perfect marriage. But if you do, you're probably better look over your shoulder. Um, so this is the highly anticipated anticipated new thriller. Um Overworked New Yorker looking for total escape from her busy life. Books an Airbnb in Wyoming. Um, the owner is a handsome man. I mean, this sounds good so far. Uh but there's a lack of cell phone service and a missing woman and something doesn't feel right. So interesting. They must have used like the good paper for this, but it's not the kind of book they usually do that for. There's no pictures. It's like I'm like expecting to find something hidden inside. I don't know why it's so heavy. <laughs> The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Oh my gosh. So this is a woman who posts a negative book review. <laughs> um, and she begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very dangerous. And she lives in a remote area with her golden retriever. Um, and so disturbing accidents start to happen. I, I like the part about the golden retriever. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds scary. That sounds scary, but like good for, again, a lot of these books seem like they're going to be good for vacation where you just want a, a page turner. Um, Yellow Face by R.F. Quang, um, who wrote um, Babel, and, which is like a science fiction book. I think she's written other science fiction books, but this is a sort of literary thriller um, uh, it says that it's chilling and hilariously cutting. That doesn't actually say hilarious. So I don't know if it's going to be funny. I'm not sure what that means. Um, basically, it's about two authors, one of whom is Asian and passes away young. And so the other one takes her book 
finishes it and then publishes it, but rebrands as an Asian person, which you are not really supposed to do. And I think things, evidence starts coming up, things start going wrong. The Enigma of Garlic by Alexander McCall Smith, a reliably cozy uh, mystery novels. This one's in the 44 Scotland Street novel, uh, 44 Scotland Street series. The House is on Fire by Rachel Beanland. It's a novel, um, takes place in Richmond, Virginia, 1811. Um, it's the height of social season. There's a theater for Christmas time. And, um, sounds like there's a lot of different characters. And then the, the, there's four main characters. And then the theater goes up in flames. And, um, then it sort of talks about what happened to those characters and in the days that follow. We have a very cute looking book called The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. My understanding is this is sort of a like a sexy, steamy, contemporary romance about a woman who takes the job of a nanny for a very attractive uh, single father. Two more. <laughs> Both paperbacks. We have Twisted Love, book one in the Twisted series. Uh, da, da, da. This is one I wasn't familiar with. Then it turned out to have a lot of holds. Um, huh. Wow. So two characters, one's male and one's female. Um, and one is her brother. So the, the man is the brother's best friend who's looking after her for some reason. And they shouldn't get together because he's, this is a love that was never supposed to happen. But when it does, it unleashes secrets that could destroy them both. And last of all, we have Abby Jimenez, yours truly. Uh, um, this is a blurb by Ali Hazelwed, popular romance, uh, sort of funny romance. So that might give you an idea. Uh, it says Dr. Brianna Ortez's life is seriously flatlining. <laughs> oh no, she's got a divorce. Her brother's looking for a kidney don donor. She's instead of getting the promotion she wants, it's going to a new man doctor who is a, um, who is very high in the, <laughs> pain in my ass scale. <laughs> I, I, maybe I, we should all have scale like that. Um, uh, but maybe he's not actually that bad. Isn't that, isn't that the classic um, enemies to lovers? So, okay, that was my box of books and we will be busy here getting these all out onto the shelf. Thanks for listening. Bye.